Will, first of all, thanks for doing this. Of course. Appreciate it. Uh, you're six games into the season. Uh, you're now, you've been around for a few years. How's that toll on the body? How are you feeling these days physically? Yeah, I mean, I feel great. I think, uh, you know, having the four years experience definitely helps, right? And that, that really stems from the knowledge I've learned from, you know, guys like Doug Baldwin, you know, Brandon Marshall for a short stint here, Bobby Wagner, Russell Wilson, just how those guys prepared and um, taking a look at what older guys have done. You know, Dwayne Brown's been along the game for a long time. So just picking their brains, learning the stuff that they do to take care of their bodies and, uh, you know, just going out there and doing it. And so, you know, here we are, you know, week six, uh, you know, year four, just feeling really good, really blessed to be, you know, out there competing. Is there any, any kind of um, uh, holdover from those injuries? And you had a couple of pretty serious ones your first two years. Any, any issues with those these days? I, I wouldn't say so. You know, huh? football's an imperfect game. You're never going to be 100% once that first game gets underway. So I can't tell you that uh, there's no bumps and bruises. But, uh, you know, from the surgeries and, and whatnot, no, we did a great job. And, I, I mean, I didn't do it alone. I've said that a thousand times. You know, the strength staff here and um, the PTs I've worked with, you know, in California. It's just been unbelievable the amount of knowledge I've learned to just prepare my body and, uh, you know, keep getting better. I think there's still room for me to get stronger, get mm -hmm. faster, and I'm still chasing that. And I think that helps. All right, that's the physical uh, standpoint for this football team. Where is this team mentally? You're, you're standing at two and four right now. It's not something that this team is used to. Uh, yeah. Where are you guys here now? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'm really excited to see what this team does, man. I think uh, P does a great job talking about grit, and uh, you never know if you have it or not until you hit hard times. And so here we are, two and four. I think everyone in Seattle isn't happy with what we're doing. So, you know, we got to find a way to go get some wins, go beat some teams, and, and uh, figure out a way to finish this season on a high note. And um, that comes from the mental standpoint. You know, we're you know we're a no lay down team. We play, you know, all four quarters. Any Seattle team, any Seattle fan that's watched us is, knows that about us. You know, we're going to play all four quarters, all the way through December, and we're going to try and make some special things happen. Do you feel the pressure at all? I mean, pressure is a privilege, you know. So, uh, you know, we got an opportunity to do something special and, um, you know, write an unbelievable story. So, you just come to work every day. You know, you do that small habits that make you, you know, who you are, and uh, you show up with a positive attitude. Nothing, nothing can stop you. you know? Talk about your side of the ball for a minute. Have you, have you really tapped the potential of what this offense can do yet? I think that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the easy answer is no. I mean, we haven't done enough to win games, so uh, there's more room on the table for us to get better. Um, you know, the simple answer is, uh, you know, I think guys have shown who they are. I think everyone kind of shows the amount of explosiveness that we have in this offense. I think we need to do a better job of doing it for four quarters, you know, helping our defense and, and just scoring more points. You know, why not? Let's go score as many points as we can. So I'm always going to be chasing more, and I think this team can do more. You talked about bringing in energy. To the to the field, bringing it to to yourself, to the ball club. What did you mean? You have to bring energy. Yeah, I mean, I think you know. First, the season's so long, so you got to figure out a way to, you know, harness your energy so you you can have it for the entirety of the season. But in the NFL football game, there's ebbs and flows. I mean, Monday Night Football, you know, there's stops and starts. There's teams that are going to go on runs. So you got to understand, you know, when you need to produce energy, when you need to conserve energy. I think it's really important in this game and. Um, you know, I think the beauty of it is, as an offensive standpoint, you know, we got to we got to bring the twelves along, right? We go make an explosive play; those twelves are going to go nuts, especially on Monday night. And so, you got to you got to channel that. You you can't you can't get let, let it get too big, right? You got to go out there and execute, but right. use that energy and go and execute, and make plays, and go on an unbelievable run like we're about to. So it's not just it's just not rah rah kind of energy. It's going out there and performing and and making those kind of plays that bring that that sense of energy absolutely yeah well you were part of a, a transition in the last couple of weeks that hasn't happened in this franchise for a decade and that is russell not playing his backup playing what was the what was the easiest part about gino stepping into that role and maybe what was the hardest part for you guys yeah i think the cool thing about um you know i'm a positive guy so the positive thing about russell going down was you see the habits that he created around that position and around our offense and around our team. And when he goes down, you didn't see those habits drop off. You know what I mean? So um, that goes from, you know, our focus in meeting rooms, you know, the quarterback, you know, Gino stepping up and going through his entirety of his reads, showing up early, getting extra work in. And, um, you know, when Gino took over, you know, it, it, it brought our team closer together. You know, we knew that 
you know, together as offense, we're going to have to rise to win games. And uh, you, know, you haven't seen any flinch. That's been the beauty. You haven't seen any flinch from our team, and we're going to go out there on Monday night and show it. Finally, Will, on Monday night, um, Matt Hasselbeck is going to be inducted into the Ring of Honor. I, I know you guys only focus on kind of what's going on in the game, and you, you probably have heard that to be the case. But do you ever find yourself when you're standing down there, might be during the during the national anthem, but you're down on the sidelines, do you ever find yourself just kind of looking up at that wall, uh, that, that ring, and saying, you know what, here's this kid from Bozeman who's got a chance to play for a football team that he followed when he was this big. Uh, and, and what are those kinds of players, what does that mean to you? I, I think about, uh, you know, the journey, and I think about um, what it took for you know an unbelievable player like Matt to get to the Hall of Fame, and I'd be curious, you know, his response. But I imagine that it would be the people in his life that got him there. You know, that's always what I think about when I look up at the ring and I see all these amazing players, and I think about their journey. You know, I think about their story. You know, where they come from. You know, just the guys on my team. I think about that, about how how much they've worked, and the sacrifices they've had to make, and the dedication that they've had to put to put in, and. Um, you know, it's it's a complete honor to be recognized like that, and I'm so so happy for Matt that he's going to get that recognition. And uh, you know, he's a Seattle legend, and I think about you know just the gratitude that I imagine he's holding in his heart, and um, that's really what I look up when I see you know you know guys who are able to you know have their name in lights for a long time. I think about their journey and, and the people that that got them where they were. And when they write that story about Will Disley, is that going to be your story? The people that helped you on that journey? Yeah, always, man. Life's about people, uh, the relationships you make. Um, you know, my family, my older brothers, um, just the dedication and the love that they've given me. You know, my story's not perfect. Played D-line for two years and then got hurt, you know, first to start the, start my career. And uh, But you just keep working, and I have to give that, you know, credit to my family for keeping my head on straight and keeping me positive and keeping me motivated. And then, you know, all the people that invest in your time just because they care, and they care about their jobs, they care about you. And, uh, you know, I never want to take that for granted. I always want to go out there and, you know, if you ever helped me along the way, what I do in my performance, that's a reflection of you. So I take that with a tremendous amount of pride and honor. And you know, just being a kid from Montana, I just want to put Montana in the best light I can. We're lucky to have that kid from Montana here. Will, thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.